Titan, Titans uniforms were ugly, and Titans play was ugly too. They lost twenty one nothing to Baltimore. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for the help there, Tennessee. Yeah, Arts. thanks, Jagoffs. Yeah. to another episode of the donut bag how you doing hope you're doing well we have a big announcement now part of the pulse podcast network you can check them out at pulsepodcastnetwork.com also i am on sports country radio on tuesdays and thursdays so please check them out there on this episode i talked to chris nicolau and ben anderson from steel city blitz about the big steelers win over the Bengals. And I have my weekly segment with Coach Warzu about week six in the NFL. I was supposed to have a segment about Metallica because Metallica is coming to Pittsburgh this week and I'm going. Um, I was, had that segment with Mark Hagelauer, Drew Zachman, and Brad Reyes, but it didn't record. So we're going to try again for the next episode. So let's get it started. Steelers win in the game of the season, 28-21 over the Bengals. With me to talk about it, I have a couple guys. Bungles. From... Bungles. <laughs> oh, Bungles got a bungle. Uh, with me to talk about it is uh, a couple guys from Steel City Blitz, Ben Anderson and Chris Nicolau. Guys, how you doing? Good. Doing well. Good doing now well. that they won, but oh my goodness, what a game. Let's start with who is your MVP of the game? Ben. Yeah. I'm going Connor. Yeah. Uh, Connor played a nice game. He had six, almost six yards of carry. Um, should have had three touchdowns. Uh, the dude just wasn't going down, uh, fighting for every carry. Um, when he plays well, we seem to win. Yeah. Yeah, he he had a nice game. That that's I I can't disagree with that. You know, ever since the last game when they've decided to actually run the ball, and I think it was also due to circumstances. You know, it's kind of hard to run the ball when you're down twenty-one nothing. But ever since then, it's like this offense has looked totally different. Um, just. Well, ben- uh, Ben threw the ball 46 times today. I, I thought he threw in the ball entirely too much, given the fact that he's got an elbow injury. But he does have an extra week to rest it, and he's basically announced that he's not going to do anything at all this week. He's not going to throw. He's not going to do anything. He's just going to completely rest in an effort to get himself back you know, to 100% or close before he plays the Browns, which I am glad for. Yeah, you know, the elbow injury, we don't know how bad it is, but it would explain why he's been so off for for so much of this year. Um, some of those throws just aren't even close. So, you know, he was saying he was, you know, basically overcompensating or having to make adjustments because of the elbow problem. So, yeah, rest it. Don't do anything. Hopefully that'll uh, hopefully that'll fix it. Cause yeah, I agree. It's um, yeah, they they need Ben. Um, yeah, I mean it's hard to hard to argue with uh with those two uh, being the best. It's it's a little scary that this is kind of looking like last year where they're relying on last minute drives. Um, and usually, uh, usually a Chris Boswell field goal uh, in the last in last second to uh, to pull it out, and that's a that's a great way to win games, but that's also a very scary and dangerous way. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the, definitely. The game doesn't end up that way if Connor gets that touchdown call, if Hayden picks off at least one of the two. Um, it just uh, ended up playing out that way, and um, it just we'll, we'll take it as a we'll take it for what it is and and get the dub. Why and that's why we, we paid Chris Boswell, honestly. Uh, not to miss extra points, not to do any of that, but to win right. games. Well, that's a thing. I mean, he he did look a little better this uh, this week. But, yeah. you know, I was a little scared, you know, regardless of, of what the uh, what the distance is, of relying on him to, uh, to pull out a game. And... Oh, hopefully he's hopefully he's all right. I mean he he looked good today. Yeah, he looked great. You know, two of two on field goals, two of two on extra points. Uh, you know, you hate to to give the guy credit for hitting a couple of chip shot field goals. I think the long one was like twenty four, twenty five yards. But you know, he he looks better. He looked more sure of himself and everything he, else today. He can probably use the bye week as well. Clear his head, relax yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah, because they're going to need him because it, it's it looks like we're going to have more games like this. This uh uh either tied or or losing in the in the last couple minutes and uh Ben having to to pull an, an awesome drive out and then uh and then Basel kicking a game winning field goal. That that looks like uh possibly the formula going forward. Yeah, I mean I hate to to admit this, but the Browns defense is for real. It is. And they didn't play all that well today, I understand. But they have in their in their other games, their other five games, and uh Baker Mayfield is a huge improvement over to Rod Taylor, so you know, this is not gonna be a pushover game in two weeks. I'm I'm kinda glad that they have a chance to redeem themselves from week one, and then they've got two weeks to get ready for it. I don't know about you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the f- the first game of the season was just a total fluke, and you could throw it out because of the weather. But, yeah, they the defense looks good. Mayfield looked good. I think um, they, they looked – the Browns looked so bad today because uh, Mayfield got hurt or something like that. Um, and it looked like it looked like some minor thing, but um, yeah, it is. It's no cakewalk. It's no. Uh, it's no typical Browns come into a Pittsburgh and, and lose uh, kind of game. So yeah, but if the Steelers lost this game, it would have. Well, forget about winning the division. That's for sure. Um, and well. Just hope for a wild card at that point, but they did win, so they're very much in it. Who do you think was the least valuable player? Or, Artie or, Burns. Or, let me put it this way: player or person? Artie Burns. Yeah, he's as valuable as, jeez, uh, a left testicle after a vasectomy. He just, he just did not have a good game today at all. I mean, he didn't have I, a, a good game. He didn't have a clue. He didn't have a plan. He has not had a good <laughs> season. Yeah, he hasn't. And I thought last week that he was coming along and he was getting better, you know, and they started giving him more snaps than Sensabaugh. You know, last week he, he had about 60, 65% of the snaps and Sensabaugh had the balance. And it looked like it was going back in Artie's favor. But today he just, he was not good. I mean, not at all. The corners as a whole didn't play all that great today, but typically when you looked at a corner getting beaten outright, it was either Sensabaugh or Burns. Mike Hilton played a really nice game, and Joe Hayden, that defense is just so much better when Joe Hayden plays than when he doesn't. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he really has been a great addition. And Stephon Tuitt today, I mean, we're talking about good players now, but Stephon Tuitt finally had a nice game today. Finally. That's Finally. nice. Thank you, Stefan. That we've only been waiting two years. Way to step up. Important week, so I'm glad he did, but you know, man. Been waiting for a while. Two it looked great. The defense, at least the line getting penetration, it looked like Dalton was under pressure the entire game. 
So, got a hand. Um, only three sacks. That was that was a little surprising, but um, it looks like yeah, it looks like they were putting pressure on Dalton all game. So that's a, a second game in a row that they've been, uh, at least from that standpoint, uh, looking good. The defense, but. Yeah, what are they? What are they gonna do with with Artie Burns? Uh, um, uh, apparently, there's reports that uh, Patrick Peterson might be available. And... So is Gary and Conley now too. Are the Raiders first round pick out of Ohio State was supposed to go uh, top fifteen in the draft, and then the false reports about the uh, the girl and and the sexual right. assault happened. The false report, which hurt his draft stock, and right. Um, so he's a good corner, but John Gruden over there, um, he's uh, he doesn't like anybody. I think he's he's picking and choosing who he likes, and everyone else can uh, can leave. It's it's really weird how he's um, he, he's acting like it's Madden. You know, we'll cut this player, we'll trade this player, we'll do. This. I want my team. I'm gonna draft my team, um, and they're stuck with him for a long time. Um, so, Only ten years. Yeah, yeah. One ten years, Chris. I, I got a friend who's a Raiders fan. I texted him today. I said, "You guys are set back a uh, a decade now." <laughs> that's all, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what he said. He said that's all. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're shopping um, uh, Carl Joseph, safety out of West Virginia, which is Sears, who Sears liked coming out. Uh, Amari Cooper's now on the trade block, which is understandable. Um, but Gary Conley, um, along with Patrick Pearson on the trade block, I think Patrick Pearson's going to be too um, too pricey for the Steelers. But I think Gary and Conley could be had, especially when he logged what, I think zero snaps today. I think that they could be had, especially with the relationship that Kevin Colbert has with um, uh, Reggie McKenzie over there in, in Oakland, um, especially with the the Martavis trade. But he might not want to get doped again um, in a trade with Kevin Colbert. But um, so something that could be had for him, young guy. Um, you know why not? Artie Burns is uh, is not cutting it right now. Cody Sensabaugh should shouldn't even have made the roster in my opinion. So um, why not explore and see what the price is? They almost have to get somebody at this point. It's it's yeah you're right. Sensabaugh and Burns are just not doing it, and yeah. Um, So, okay, so what was the score? It was 20, it was, it was 21-20 after, well, it was, it was 20 to 14 Steelers and then it was basically relying on the defense to not mess it up and they mess it up. The only good thing that they did was let them score with with uh, time left. Right. So, thanks? Well, I kind of wonder if they didn't let them score when they got close, frankly. Because, um, you know, you get down to, like, it's a minute. It was like a minute 25, and they get a first down at the at the 11. And it was kind of like, just, just let them in. Just let them in so we can get the ball back. And then we've got three timeouts. We have Ben Roethlisberger. If they give us that much time, we're gonna we're gonna win the game because all we gotta do is go down the other direction and kick a field goal, which is pretty much what I thought the game plan was gonna be. And apparently, according to Ben, after the game, that was in fact the game plan. But you know, when they they pull a cover zero and try to play man and pull an all out blitz, you know, Ben's just gonna use a three step drop and throw over it. So, yeah, touchdown A.B., obviously. But, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, they, they went 75 yards in how long? Uh, it wasn't long. Maybe a couple two minutes. minutes. Two minutes, 24 seconds. Yeah. It wasn't good. 214. So, yeah, they, they didn't play that drive very well, but they did enough obviously, to let them in when they got down close, just say, screw it, you guys can go in, you'll have a one-point lead, and our offense will win it for us. And the offense did. They they played a great game today. They really did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Juju led seven reception.